Welcome to my Mediterranean dinner party. We're gonna make a bunch of stuff. This is the last episode of the season. And if you've been watching for a long time, you're probably like, what do you mean seasons? You've been doing this show for an, over a year straight without any breaks. True. <laughs> so I thought it would be kind of cool to build in some seasons. So after this episode, we're gonna take two weeks off and then we're gonna do seasons that correspond with the seasons of the year. And there's gonna be two week breaks in between. So 10 episodes, two week break. So I hope you're jazzed about that as much as I am. Uh, and today to celebrate the final episode of the season, we're doing a Mediterranean feast. So it's going to be some store-bought stuff, some homemade stuff, and we're going to have a few friends over later. Before we do though, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get into it. First up, we're making dolma or dolmatis or uh, stuffed vegetables if you will so i've got some little tiny peppers which are so cute and i also have some grape leaves and these are going to get stuffed with a mixture of delicious ricey stuff here is about one and a half cups of basmati rice that i've soaked in hot water for 30 minutes so it's kind of just pre, it's not cooked, it's just kind of ready to be cooked, if you will. And then I have a grated onion. So I'm gonna basically just, and a lot of juice. I don't know how to get this juice in there. You know what? Bring the bowl to the cutting board. This is how you do it. And then just scrape it in. That is how you do it, I think. So that was one medium onion. And now I'm gonna chop up three garlic cloves. I guess I could have grated these two. Would have saved a bit of time, but whatever. Three garlic cloves and then also a lot of herbs. <laughs> a lot of herbs and green stuff. So I'm gonna use about three green onions. These are veggies, so that's why I'm going really doubling down on the herbs for ultimate flavor explosion. I'm just gonna chop these until I get tired of chopping. You could also um, just chuck this all in a food processor and blitz it and that would be very fast. Sometimes I don't like pulling out the food processor though. It just feels too noisy and just doesn't really suit my vibe. When I think of Mediterranean herbs, I think of like mint, dill, parsley, sometimes basil, that kind of thing. So today we're kind of going in the minty dill kind of route. There's different variations all over the Mediterranean. I know that in Greece, it's this is called dolmatis. What's it called in Bulgaria again? Sarmi. 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 Did I say it right? Yeah. So in Bulgaria, there's a similar thing called sermi. And uh, is that good? Am I embarrassing myself? No. Oh, okay. So anyway, so there's different versions all over the place. This is my version. <laughs> this is non-traditional, literally just making it up. So I have a big pile of herbs, no measuring required. And I think I need my big knife for this guy. I'm not gonna be too fussed with chopping them super small, but I do want them to be small enough that maximum flavor is being exposed and also that there's maximum distribution amongst the rolls. I don't want to get like a big mint leaf in one of mine. Should I try with two knives? I did this in cooking school. They kind of have to be the same kind of knife though. Whoa. You have to kind of put your finger between the two. These are awkward because they're different sizes. I might chop myself. But if you put your finger between the two, you can chop with two blades instead of one. It's actually kind of awkward. I think you can get good at it, but I'm not gonna get good at it today on, this, on today's episode. 
Today's episode is not devoted to me mastering the art of chopping with two knives. Sorry if that's what you were looking for. You can go watch <laughs> some other cooking show. Chopping a ton of herbs is very satisfying, I think. Because look, it was a huge pile. Now it's just this little tiny pile. Okay, so these guys are going in. The last couple things going into the rice is a bunch of salt. I'm gonna put like a full teaspoon, I think, because I feel like it'll need it. Maybe even more, two teaspoons? Yeah, I'm just doing two teaspoons. And then I think because I love lemon zest, I think it's super non tradish but I'm gonna do some lemon zest anyway. Zest of one lemon goes in. A big fat glug of olive oil. Yeah, I, I just did that. And some pepper. Ooh, actually that's the wrong thing. Some pepper. I need to refill this. The last thing going into this Dolmati mixture is tomato paste. And I got this super cool can of tomato paste. It's Greek tomato paste, I've never seen it before. It came with a resealable lid like cat food. Very cute. I think what I'm gonna do though with this is I'm gonna take what I need because nobody in their right mind would ever use this much tomato paste in anything. I'm gonna use, take what I don't use and I'm gonna scoop it with my little portion scoop onto a baking sheet and freeze it in little little balls. And then I've got like single serve, cute little tomato paste portions ready to go. So that's your hot tip of the day, well, number one. I think I need two of these scoops. Cool. And now I'm going to mix this all together with a spatula. So I'm trying a method today with these things that I've never used before, which is cooking them in the instant pot. Truth be told, I've never made these before. I'm just doing it for the first time with you guys. Um, but I'm gonna cook them in the instant pot. And I saw a bunch of videos with different people giving different instruction on how long to cook them in the instant pot. And I don't really know what to believe. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use my gut a little bit on this. And if it works out, I will let you know. If it doesn't, I'll be honest and tell you what to do instead. <laughs> 30 minutes, done. So I made these guys and I served them and we ate them. Overall, they were pretty okay. I mean, some of them had burst a little bit and some of them were kind of unevenly cooked. So the rice was a bit firmer in some than others. And overall, I was just pretty unenthused and I decided to test this recipe again with a little bit of a different method so that you could have the right method. <laughs> this time I parboiled the rice and I used about a cup and rinsed it in cold water. And then all the other measurements were exactly the same. So one grated onion, two teaspoons of salt, all the herbs, the garlic, the tomato paste. And then I put the rolled up grape leaves and peppers into a cake pan and did the old pot in pot method in the instant pot so that it was much, much, much easier to take out of the Instant Pot when they were done. All that being said, I'm probably never gonna make these things again and I would advise you to do the same unless you're into like a really long process where you get all the family involved and you're all gathered around the grape leaves. <laughs> I'm just not interested. <laughs> like I don't do fussy stuff and I found these to be very fussy. So next time I throw a similar dinner party, I'm going to buy a can of the store-bought pre-made Dalmatis and I'm going to enjoy the heck out of them. But the recipe's sound. If you want to give it a go, your call. But not for me. All right, that's enough of my rant. 
Next up is the eggplant and this thing was insanely good and it's very easy. So I definitely recommend you make this one. Now we're going to move on to the next thing, which is roasted eggplant with a really delicious walnut-y, feta-y, herby topping. So I'm going to start off by putting my baking sheet in the oven to preheat. It's set to 450 degrees and I just want to get it ripping hot so that I can get a good kind of caramelization on the eggplant if possible. While that's in there, I'm just going to prep these guys. Look at these. Look at how beautiful. They're huge. These are the Japanese eggplant, which, you know, I, you can choose whichever ones you want, but these ones I thought were pretty nice looking. So I'm going to cut them lengthways. And actually it's kind of cool to leave the top on. I should leave the top on. And if it's curvy like this, you kind of have to like maneuver it. And these I'm just going to dress with a little bit of a flavorful kind of oil. And then we're going to top them with a really nice topping. So I always, almost always like to give eggplants a little crisscross when I'm roasting them because I feel like it helps the flavor get in. Just a quick score. And I think it also helps them cook faster. And I don't like spongy eggplant. So scoring them helps them cook so that they're not spongy. Just going to speed up the process here. Okay. So there they are. These are not all going to fit onto one pan, are they? Well, we'll do our best. So the oil I'm making is just olive oil, I'm just using a tiny little bowl to mix it up. And then I'm using za'atar, which is one of my favorite sp spice blends, I guess. It's like thyme and sesame seeds and um, all kinds of other good stuff. I'm putting quite a bit in there, two, ta two teaspoons. A clove of garlic, I'm just going to grate it in. And quite a bit of salt, probably about a teaspoon of salt. And then give it a little stir. So this should be like really hot now, so don't touch it without oven mitts and then I'm just gonna dump the eggplant on there ooh it's a bit of a tight squeeze I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna advise that you get a bigger um, baking sheet or divide it into two when you're making this but I'm probably just gonna cram them on maybe it's like a little game of Tetris we can do here okay it's called eggplantress eggplantress there you go. And now we just give them a rub. And just ignore the fact that the, the oil gets absorbed immediately and then there's no oil left. That's just the way, it, that's just the way eggplant operates. You don't want to just keep dumping more and more oil onto it though. It's just like get the flavor in and walk away. Walk away from the eggplant. There, that's not bad actually. Check it out. So I was going to cook them cut side down first, but I think they're going to fit better this way. So I'm just going to cook them this way. And if we get color, we get color. If we don't, we will cover it up with walnuts and feta. They're going in. Okay. Well, the eggplant is cooking. We can make a delicious topping for it. This topping is going to be pretty special. I'm just going to grab a bowl and start with some parsley. Oops. A big pinch. Real big pinch. And chop that up a little bit. I actually don't want it to be super fine here though. I kind of like the leafy, it's almost like a salad that we're topping this with. And then I've got some toasted walnuts. So about the same amount as the parsley by volume. 
couple handfuls. <laughs> I love walnuts. Walnuts are, I think they're like a total unsung hero of the nut world. Everyone's, you know, losing their minds over almonds all the time. Almonds are great. They're awesome. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts are great too, but they're kind of a pain because you have to peel them. Next up is some feta. The best feta in the world, I think. I don't know. I haven't tried every feta, but to me so far, this Bulgarian feta is my favorite and it's all we buy in this house. <laughs> so big chunk, that's how much. Crumble it in. Yum. So I find that because eggplant is quite bland, uh, we that's why we tossed it with all that yummy stuff beforehand, but also it's really nice to get topped with very salty kind of punchy flavors. Next with this mixture is some orange zest. So this could be also lemon zest if you're more of a fan of lemon zest, totally fine. I'm gonna do orange because I just, it's just speaking to me right now. Ooh, and the other thing I wanted to put in here was some golden raisins. So if my raisins were looking a little bit less than amazing i would soak them probably just in some hot water but these ones are pretty plump and juicy so i'm just gonna go straight in with them so we've got sweet raisins we've got salty feta fresh parsley zingy orange zest and crunchy walnuts that's nice isn't it and then olive oil just to kind of bring it all together i'm not adding salt because Feta is really salty already. Uh oh. You know what that means. <laughs> Give it a little taste with this weird spoon. Mm. Oh my God. So good. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. You've probably heard of tzatziki. This is basically the same. It's like a yogurty dill, cucumber sauce. Um, in Bulgaria, it's called snezhanka and there's walnuts in it too. So we're gonna do that version. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So I've got a bowl. I've got um, yogurt that's been hanging in a cloth. This was my homemade yogurt and I've been draining it for about an hour and it's got, there's a lot of liquid that's come out of it. So this is gonna be nice and thick. Basically, the main reason for that is that I don't want it to get too watery when I add the cucumber. I like a nice, thick, thick business. So I'm just gonna drop the drained yogurt into my bowl and scrape. Get the last bits, throw this cloth directly into the wash of course. <laughs> All right, so this one's really simple. It only takes a couple minutes. Get rid of that water. Um, it's gonna be dill. Okay. And then garlic, I tend to be like a one clove of garlic person for raw applications because, especially when I'm having friends coming over, cause I don't know, I feel like I've just been traumatized in the past from people going, oh, so quite a lot of garlic in there, eh? you know? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> is, that a, is that a problem? So anyway, uh, I stick to like moderate garlic, which one clove actually goes a long way, especially if you have leftovers and then the next day it's so garlicky. So I'm just gonna do one, I just need the flav. That's right. So that's going in. I, f I minced it pretty finely there just cause I don't wanna chomp into a raw garlic. A good bit of salt, like maybe start with half a teaspoon. Um, walnuts. A handful. 
I'll put all their actual recipes in the description box. I know I'm just giving you like handful of this, handful of that. So I'll make sure to recall all the amounts and put them in the description box. This is such a nice touch. The walnuts, this is the thing that people go, oh, that's cool. That's like, they're not expecting crunch, but it's a very welcomed addition, I'd say. And cucumber, the main ingredient. I was like, definitely felt like I was forgetting something. I wasn't about to forget that. Are you kidding me? Never. I would never forget old cuke. I'm using about half of a cucumber here. And I am, of course, peeling it because I love peeled cucumber. Grated. So I've seen a lot of people use diced cucumber in these kind of applications. I just don't dig it. Like I'm dip, I'm, this is something I wanna dip my bread into. I want it to be scoopable. And I don't know about you, but when was the last time you've had an easy time scooping a cube of something? Like salsa, when salsa is really chunky, it's like, great, I have one hunk of tomato on my chip. It's not what I want. I want, I want salsa. I want cucumber in my dip. I don't want a chunk of cucumber. So this one, you can strain it or you can squeeze it in a cloth, but I'm just going to squeeze it in my hands over the sink. Ready? You got that? Okay. That's going in. So this stuff is going to be great with the dolmatis that we're eating. It's also going to be great with just bread. I also have a few things that you'll see as I pull it all together. Um, I made some hummus earlier. I didn't show you that because I already have a hummus video. If you want to watch it, I'll stick the link up here. And yeah, salad, bread, hummus. I got a bunch of olives. I got some store-bought uh, tabbouleh as well as like a nice little salad option. So this is just one of those great little dinner parties that you can whip together with some store-bought stuff, some homemade stuff, and it just feels really, really special. Okay, so here's what everything looks like when it's done. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you wanna see more, please subscribe and hit the like button if you liked it. Leave a comment if you have any questions and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again soon. I hope it's good, I have no idea. I didn't even taste it. This is a battle, full on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend.